are live. This is the market update. I'm your host, Bill Noble. No, your TV or your YouTube or your phone is not broken. We are live late at night. If you need a roadmap in crypto, subscribe to this new channel. Turn on alerts so you know when we're going live. And if the content works for you, hit the like button. We crossed 1,500 followers today. Hats off to you. Let's welcome who's on the stream. Bull Runner first, followed by Richard Barry from Augusta, Georgia. I Need a Nap is here. Iron Alien. Crypto Lion from Arkansas. Sports Hobbyist. GF. Welcome. Mike Rocks from Australia. Giving you a little daylight time action. Raj is here. Welcome. Welcome to the show. So why are we doing crypto late night? Why not? Right? Top Center for Dallas says, killing my bedtime. Great to see you. I was kind of hoping, not hoping, that we would have people falling out of bed to check it out. Try to get you in bed as soon as we can. Right? Caleb is here. Little night education. Thank you. 1.5K, Iron Allen. All right. What are we doing today? We're going to do news. We're going to talk briefly about how Michael Saylor is important. We're going to talk about how Michael Saylor is the story on the upside, the constructive story that people are underestimating. We're going to once again pound a table on the Bank of Japan, and there's like a warning bell going off in Legacy. And at the end of the day, dips in crypto. January dips. How can we use charts to get set up? By the way, interesting fact, had somebody on my Instagram today after I posted about Solana, right? In other words, the Solana FUD's so ridiculous, you have to go the other way, right? Somebody wants a Solana price prediction. He wants it out four years. I was thinking about doing, you know, the September to remember where are your altcoins going to be in September, thinking about developing a top 20 list and doing videos on each coin. If you like the idea of that, leave a comment down below with a coin that you're interested in. Because I think I can come up with some both realistic and simultaneously shocking price predictions for what crypto could do over a summer rally. And January may be the month to, to get this stuff on a dip, right? Dip buying strategies, whether it's trading or maybe you wanna try and hang on to it, it's worth a look, okay? Just entered the space. Waleski, welcome. Block Connect is here. Hello. Right. Andre, Joan of America, Tux Viewer. <clears throat> All right. Guys down under, welcome. Okay. Let's talk Michael Saylor just for a moment. No slides. Just talk about it. Michael Saylor, when Bitcoin was on the way up, became a sensation when he decided as a tech CEO that he was going to get effectively into the business of Bitcoin by putting a huge amount of it on his balance sheet, just like he would any other fiat currency. He borrowed money in the legacy bond market at ridiculously low rates, right? basically when rates were at zero, and used the money to buy Bitcoin. Okay, so he was buying Bitcoin at much higher prices. Now he's sort of like moved himself from the software part of the company over into like kind of a, a Bitcoin hedge fund of its own. Now, he works for a computer company or owns a computer company. So what he's got to do, and he's already started doing it, is he said that he's going to offer software solutions using the Bitcoin Lightning Network, meaning he's going to let people reward content providers. He's going to offer marketing executives a way to pay people using Bitcoin, because that's what MicroStrategy is. They basically give you a, a computer software platform to run a business. And Michael Saylor wants to integrate Bitcoin into that. Question for you is, is that a one-off strategy? Like, did they just say, oh, here's an announcement, right? No. See, back when Michael Saylor was doing the whole Bitcoin cowboy thing, right? He would only be able to have a Bitcoin announcement every once in a while, right? Like quarterly. Be like, oh, Michael, uh, Michael Saylor at MicroStrategy bought however much Bitcoin last quarter or this month, 
right? He could do all the social media appearances he wanted, but in terms of announcements, like corporate news flow, as they would say in equities, eh, monthly, quarterly. Now, Michael Saylor can do, you know, twice a month or monthly, quarterly, not just, hey, this is how much Bitcoin we've bought, but this is how much Web3 functionality we've added on top of Bitcoin. So while Bitcoin price action is seemingly, I don't know, it may seem boring to people. I'm just wondering if now is the time to start thinking about where to buy Bitcoin dips. Like if there's a dip in Bitcoin and you know what, folks, that's a big if. Because there's something going on with the Bank of Japan and there's something going on in the U.S. bond market. Something's wrong out there. Like there's something out there and it ain't no man like the Predator movies, like for real. Unscheduled bond buying, unscheduled money printing by the Bank of Japan is going on every night now to the point where it's not unscheduled. And there were a whole bunch of reasons why Bitcoin should have gone down today. You know, oh, the Fed's going to hike rates. Oh, stocks were terrible. Wait a minute. Bitcoin didn't move. And then by the end of the day, people are going, wait a minute. Bitcoin didn't move. It didn't go down. It should have. It didn't. Some some lender, right? Uh, where is it? Yeah, crypto lender Genesis considers bankruptcy. Ah, eh, whatever. Whatever. Now, why would that be? That's because, and I put this on my Twitter, the next crisis is liquidity. Everyone is selling U.S. bonds and maybe even some U.S. stocks, but I think mainly people are selling U.S. bonds because they're afraid if they don't sell now, they won't be able to get out. Somewhere in the legacy world, there's a problem. That's why the Bank of Japan is printing money. I've done all kinds of videos and live streams about it, but you know what? I said, wait a minute. There's two catalysts. One, Sailor's going to build Web3 on Bitcoin. Two, there's a problem with the credibility of legacy in general. Like, for example, you may be better off with stocks come March if there's a puke. Who knows? The Fed, the Fed has messed up legacy or legacy messed up itself. Just the way crypto messed up itself. That's why crypto is holding. So if you look at Bitcoin, okay, you know, 16.8 would have been a level to hold, but that's not holding right now. 16.75 or 16.6. You may get dips in Bitcoin, and I think the guys who are going to be down there buying it are big professional hedge funds. Seriously. Like, I think you're going to see big hedge funds buying. They're, they're, they're probably going to buy Bitcoin. And I think the crypto hedge funds are going to buy the likes of Solana. Okay. I've been asked on Instagram for a four-year price prediction on Solana. And I'm wondering if the price prediction is out for the summer. In the meantime, nobody wanted Solana at eight, right? It went to 14. Everyone wants to buy a dip. They may get it. They may not. This is the kind of pain trade you can have when something crashes as bad as Solana did. And then everybody just like, you know, first everyone in crypto was obsessed with SBF. And now they're obsessed with Solana FUD. Like, I mean, the, the crypto Twitter universe needs an enema, right? I mean, at, at 65K, Bitcoin was going to 100K and then a million. Now, they're so addicted to the FUD, they can't get off of it. Like, it goes from SBF and then, oh, you know, TVL on Solana is down 98%. Well, no shit, right? That's when you buy these coins, right? You bought them when no one thought they were, no one was taking them seriously, that was the first buy. The second buy might be that everyone's written them off. This includes Solana, Polkadot. I mean, literally, I think this is the altcoin indicator for the altcoin space. Like ETH is an entity unto itself because I think ETH is going to track metals. So it'll be Bitcoin, it'll be ETH and metals, and it'll be altcoins and a crypto hedge fund chase. And who knows, this chase could last all year. Seriously. Like Bitcoin may go up and down. May, Bitcoin may be tied to stocks or Bitcoin may just do nothing. Right? I do think dips in Bitcoin are to be bought because of this sailor factor. 
right? Nobody has ever thought about Bitcoin as a part of Web3. Well, it's going to happen. It's got to happen because Sailor's got so much Bitcoin and he's got a software company hitched to it. He's got to do something. So there's going to be news flow there that's interesting. Okay, so we got people coming in, ADA, XRP. We'll make sure we save the list, okay? Virgil says, Bill saved my capital last fall. He said, sell while you can. Right, now I appreciate that. Sell while you can may apply to legacy in altcoins. You ready for this? Everyone sit down, brace yourself. It may be buy when you can in altcoins because if altcoins turn and gap the other way, there may be no seller because everyone's already sold, right? Maybe everyone has already sold. So uh, let's just check the <laughs> check the comments. Devin is here. Welcome. Jump off or stay on the chopper. Okay. I think it's get to the chopper in legacy. I think in crypto, it's stay involved and think about dips, not investment advice. Okay. Joan of America is asking, what about Japan? Um, Japan's bond market and the mechanism by which they fund their government is broken. Okay. The Japanese have to keep interest rates at zero or they're going to have trouble paying their bills as in the government. You're also going to have problems with the biggest holders of Japanese bonds, which are their banks and insurance companies. So the global inflation problem has been horrible for bonds and the Japanese can't survive if their bond market goes down at all. So they have to print money to buy all the bonds back from the sellers to keep interest rates from rising. And they're getting desperate as one colleague of mine said. Okay. So uh, if you've protected your capital, good. Okay. Don't put all your chips back in, but everybody is so bearish as in the Solana chart, you know, Pol Polkadot has a bid. I mean, is, is anybody doing like retracement analysis? I, I mean, I don't know. I mean, you tell me. And I was just like wondering. I was like, hey, maybe it's time to just put up like a good old fashioned intraday chart. And even though intraday charts don't have a shelf life, in three days, you can ask yourself, huh, you know, Polkadot only did a 23% retracement before it tried to bounce. That's interesting. You know, maybe the best dip you get in Polkadot is 450. I don't know. But there's a lot of people who want to buy Polkadot at 450, and that's why it may not go there. So I'm not trying to create FOMO, not, right? But I'm saying if there is a dip, right, maybe you got to think about scooping that up for, you know, a move in January, okay? The fuzz crypto, how low does the Dow Jones go before the Fed pivots? Let me phrase it this way. It's not how low does it have to go. It's how fast does it have to go down, right? 2023 will be the year of speed. Markets will move faster and liquidity is not a given, right? In other words, if everybody goes to sell all at once, there may not be a buyer. So you may have a flash event in equity, say, I don't know, in March. But crypto, I think, is included with commodities in that it's a hard asset where you buy the dips. And of course, everyone's forgotten about Web3. Like everybody's blown off Web3. I've been saying it and I'm like, you know what? I think I'm just going to keep right on saying it. Keep right on saying it. U.S. government moves to seize $460 million dollar Robin Hood stake. You bet they are. Can somebody tell me how the biggest fraudster in American history bought a publicly traded company and regulators were asleep at the wheel? Like, how did they not know? What happened to like, know your customer? You know what I'm saying? Like if, if a bank lends money and opens a bank account and gives somebody a credit card and they turned out to be a money launderer, they're in trouble. So, Somebody bought a publicly traded company and no one knew it was fraud, fraudulent. So naturally, Uncle Sam wants to come in and go, oh, we'll take this. Notice this doesn't say creditors. This says U.S. government. Not sure if they're trying to protect Robinhood shareholders. I suspect not. 
LG doubles down on a smart TV metaverse push. Okay. 2023 Consumer Electronics Show says these guys are getting into the metaverse. I'm getting into the metaverse. Just check out our thumbnails on this YouTube channel. Okay. The metaverse is coming. AI is here. Web3 is here. And everyone's talking about FUD. Everyone wants to talk about how Solana doesn't work anymore, which is classic. And I've been saying this, and I'm not going to stop saying it. The FUD is highest right before whatever it is becomes relevant. It happened in Amazon back in the day. And of course, for everybody who thinks the Fed is just going to keep hiking rates, I did this thing on TikTok that said the Fed is done hiking rates. 62,000 views. Most of the comments, people telling me that I was out of my mind. And then this drops. And, and, and again, every big tech company has to is probably going to have to do 25%. Right? I just found out that there's a giant skyscraper in downtown Austin that's going to be sublet out because a big tech company walked away and said, yeah, we don't, we don't need this giant building. It's going to get sublet out. So frothy real estate prices, you know, high downtown rents, apartment rents that were parabolic five months ago, collapsing, right? This, this is what a recession looks like. Wait, whoops, here on my Twitter. Okay, here's an example of the Solana FUD. Still longing Solana while haters spinelessly pile on to the downside momentum. When Solana recovers, it's not me that will be haunted by the thought. Instead of jeering, I could have been buying Solana under or around $10. Hey, man, couldn't have said it better myself, right? In other words... Nothing was wrong back in April. Everything is wrong now. It's literally the opposite. It's the opposite, right? You know, it went from all problems to no problems or no problems to all problems. Now you can live in Lugano by just using Bitcoin. Hmm. Can you imagine this on the way up in Bitcoin, right? That there was a place where you could go and buy Bit and use Bitcoin to live. Like back in the day, that would have sent the market absolutely to the moon. Let's go to Bitcoin TA on a 90-minute chart. So there, there's a DeMarc 13 top. That hit on January 5th today, right? Or tomorrow in Australia, as I like to joke. Or yesterday, sorry. Okay, so Bitcoin may have one down day or one sideways day. I'm thinking that's the opportunity to get it. And then ETH, if you look at a four-hour chart, this is just sideways, right? ETH is outside this range. Let me see if I can draw on this. ETH is outside this range, right? And ETH's not even budging. It's not budging. Right. ETH is a bird on a wire getting ready to fly. One more. There you go. Okay. From Jesse Livermore, uh, these upward sloping formations. Uh, I, I guess it's not perfect, but I'm thinking this is like some sort of accumulation cone. Maybe ETH has one more downside thrust, but I swear to God, if this thing holds above 1250, it's going to go. Right. One of the things about ETH that people have like totally underestimated is how fast ETH could go up. Like if there's a problem in stocks and bonds, the speed with which those things could go down, you know, people are underestimating. They could go down rapidly. But one of the things that ETH, you know, sort of like strong like bull here is telling you is that when the time comes for ETH and probably Bitcoin too to go up, 
that you're going to have God candles. Now, I'm not saying you're going to have a God candle tomorrow, but at some point in January, you are probably going to have a realization where people are going to go, oh no, there really is a problem with legacy. In other words, you can't have Amazon laying off 18,000 workers and bond yields rising. They were rising. Like, seriously, this is an 89 minute chart. You know, bond yields came off a little bit. But if you look at it like a, a, a one day chart, interest rates have done nothing but go up. This is the 30 year government bond interest rate that determines the 30 year mortgage yield. From December 14th to, to the end of the year, bonds did nothing but go down and yields went up. How could rates be going up with this going on? That's supposed to make rates go down unless, unless there's a problem with U.S. government bonds. U.S. government credibility, $1.7 trillion spending bill, bill voted on by everybody, and we cannot elect the Speaker of the House. This is the other case for crypto. I don't, I don't have the slide up here, but if we go back to Ethereum, ask yourself this question. On the eve of effectively in a rebellion by right-thinking U.S. citizens, which was, you know, pretty horrible to watch as a patriot, the people who subscribe to that ideology have successfully prevented the Republican Party from electing the Speaker of the House or the person who speaks for the majority in the U.S. Parliament if you're overseas. How embarrassing. Like, I, I mean, you know, it's, it's like they're, they're working hard to embarrass themselves when 20 people can hold the entire Congress hostage on the eve of the last rebellion. I mean, can we do anything right as a country, as a government? Maybe as a country we can, but not the government. So why is everybody buying U.S. government bonds? Why does everyone think the dollar is so great? The Federal Reserve is hiking rates into a recession. I mean, does the Fed think that all these people that get laid off from Amazon are going to go work at Chick-fil-A and that's how the labor shortage problem is going to sort itself out. Is that what they think? Uh, leave a comment down below if you know what they're thinking, because I don't. So I'm sitting here looking at ETH going, okay, well, no one likes Solana. No one likes Avalanche, right? L let me just put one of these layer ones up here, right? Pelosi's portfolio says never McCarthy. Channel says Great Depression. JP Stanley is here. Welcome, right? Chase Michael says I'm on fire. Thank you. I appreciate that. It's late night. Fired up. Right? Fired up for this new channel getting off the ground. Right? It's 10,000 people who are going to they're going to find me, right? They're going to find me. Okay. Avalanche. This is a 240 minute or 4 hour chart. So, you got a nice 13 bottom, then as in rangy environments, you get the nine top high and then it's going to glide down here to 11 something 11 14 and we'll see what they got we'll see what they got i'm guessing avalanche is going to wind up challenging the top of the give up trade which is 14 minimum minimum right and this is going to be like stocks coming off the lows in 2009 where you're going to have to forget about oh it's up 10 percent, therefore i can't buy it no that didn't work in Solana. It's not going to work in Avalanche or any of this other Web3 stuff. Okay. Let's, you know, let's have a giggle and look at near. You know, everybody thought this was going up, right? <clears throat> everybody thought it was going to 20. Okay. It went to 125 and then it went to 160 on a rope. Effectively, near has unwound a large part of the FTX dump or the final FTX dump. That should tell you something. Some of these altcoins were like, yeah, okay, whatever. 
You know, people are obsessed with the FUD and no one is paying attention to this. It reminds me of when these coins first came out. I mean, yeah, there was a little bit more hype when they were unknown, but man, Right. So if they, if they dump this thing over the next, like, say, two days, right, this way you start looking at the dip, right? Start looking at, because, you know, one of the things that people say when you're coming off of a low, assuming buying a dip even works, you know, I don't want to be arrogant. Let's go back to Solana on a daily chart, right? Assuming dip buying works, let me tell you something. If you're coming off a major low, dip buying is tough. Because when it turns around, what they call the knife experience comes back in your mind, right? You see, oh, when it's going up, it's easy. But when it dips, you're like, oh, my God, I can't do this. I can't do it. Well, at 1229, that might be a good level to do it because that was resistance in Solana. It broke through there. This is a daily chart of Solana. I, Solana could have three more big updates, especially if there's the, the dip is just moving sideways. If this thing just goes sideways like Bitcoin, right? If, if Bitcoin can't go down, I'm actually seeing that as a potentially bullish sign. I know that the, the, the common thought based on what happened in 2018 when Bitcoin was sideways to 6K and then fell out of bed to three, Everyone's living with that PTSD who lived through that. But in this case, temporarily, Bitcoin sitting at like 16.7, 16.6, that may mean one more dip and then this thing springboards higher as people and hedge funds say, oh my God, you know, there may be a problem in legacy or oh my God, you know, this may be the only asset that has a shot at going up, which is another way to look at it. Right, like, where are you going to make money in the in between now and September? Like, what's got upside potential? Bonds with the Fed talking the way they are, you know, stocks with this kind of layoffs. You know, stocks are are probably going to do better when the Fed figures it out, but we're not there yet. So, where's the upside potential? Well, I don't know. Let's take a look at Solana. You know. <laughs> The give up trade in Solana started at, uh, let's see, 37, right? And this went straight down. And of course, nobody thinks it can go straight back up again. <laughs> that would be funny. Ronnie is here. Welcome. Have a great 2023, you too. Okay. And then when you have Great Depression, all right, let's talk about what that might look like. So I'm guessing that you could have a very cold winter, a very dry summer. The Fed is going to over-tighten and then be overwhelmed if commodity prices go higher because of weather. The Fed's going to be forced to capitulate at two levels. First, they're going to have to acknowledge that raising rates didn't stop inflation because inflation had a lot to do with the war, the price of wheat, the price of fertilizer, the price of oil. And if commodity shocks continue, the next one could be gold and silver. They can't stop that by hiking rates. They can try, but it's not going to work, especially if it's weather related. So if people suffer this year, it's probably going to be unemployment, weather, and commodity shortages or commodity price spikes or price movements that people don't expect. Gold, silver, and water. Want to find out about water? Subscribe to the channel and I'll tell you about it. Okay? Let's go to different coins. Let's take a look at the metaverse or other altcoins. Here's Sandbox. Sandbox Weekly DeMarc Work fascinating, right? There's a DeMarc nine bottom forming. That's really interesting. Okay. Um, there's also a 13 and a nine bottom. If you look at a different signal called combo, let's try a daily chart. Okay. 
So on a daily chart, you have the five wave signal. Okay. You're getting the dip here. A lot of people are unloading this. So, you know, maybe this is not the greatest play in the world. The metaverse is coming back. And so is art. I think the AI trend, the AI craze is going to somehow make its way into crypto. I don't know if it's through old metaverse plays or new metaverse plays, or if it becomes an S coin craze at some point. Web3 is not dead. Web3 is actually here. And people are like, oh, wow, look at this. And they're so distracted by chat GDP. Let me say that right. They're so distracted by the, the AI search engine that they may be missing opportunities in crypto. XRP fighting to hold support around 34 cents. Man, I would love to see these guys get vindicated. If there, if there ever needed to be a victory over some of the nonsense with the government, it would be now. It, it would be now. Okay. Going back over here, let's just check a couple of random cryptos. Chain link on an 89-minute chart. Let's look at that. Okay, so what does Chainlink do? Chainlink has a rally and then it retraces 62% of the run up. Really interesting. I mean, this makes me think some of these altcoins may bottom right now. That, you know, the dip or the sideways action may be in Bitcoin and Chainlink sub six or around five and a half becomes interesting, particularly since there is support right here. This was like the low before the last ramp up. Interesting, right? Web three dead. Okay. Sports hobbyist says flow dipped a lot. Okay. I, I think what you're looking for in all these altcoins. So if we're, if we're going to do the retracement math and this has a shelf life, okay, you're going to want to see, whoops, okay, does a 62% retracement hold? That's the first dip strategy. So in flow, that's 0.68. Okay, so a lot of the altcoins already did a 62% retracement, which is, again, interesting. Because if tomorrow is kind of like a meh day, the altcoins and Bitcoin could be set up for a run up. Now, if 62% doesn't hold, then you need to reevaluate because then people may take losses. You know, like I said, taking the loss for last year's taxes, they'll puke it out this year and take the loss for this year's taxes. Sometimes you get that in January. I I'm thinking positive in things like flow. Okay. <laughs> Chase says, I'm sure that 100,000 people are going to find you over the next few months. I appreciate that. And let me tell you how that's going to happen. Okay. I wasn't going to bring it up, but I'm bringing it up. Okay. There's a bunch of guys who I now work for. They came up with an idea. They're like, let's come up with a mechanism for water, a price for water. And then let's get water from a place where they have plenty of it to a place where they're running out of it. Now, one of the most underreported things out there is that people are running out of water and everybody's looking to buy it or get it. So what would happen if you developed a way to move water from one place to the other using blockchain? Makes sense, right? Simple. Use blockchain and crypto to create price discovery and water. And the thing that's really catchy is this is happening. This is real. No one believes it. I got FUD smeared all over my face for liking it. And the comeback could be me talking about this symbol bark, which is essentially the water price discovery mechanism. Me 
wearing a blue bark t-shirt. So instead of the green shirt, it's the blue shirt on top of a large barge or ship carrying water from one place to the other. 62,000 people, according to TikTok, 62,000 people looked at what I did on TikTok yesterday and 25,000 or 27,000 people looked at it today. So what happens when 25,000 people see me standing there while water moves from one place to the other thanks to a blockchain mechanism? Does anybody remember like blockchain, the future of everything? Does anybody remember that? Hey, now. So if everybody finds me, that's how they're going to find me, right? It's going to be on Instagram. Don't laugh. I'll be on Instagram. Like, oh, here's Bill with the ship. Wow, they're using blockchain to move water? The pictures will say a thousand words. The guy who never stops talking won't have to say a damn thing. <laughs> Gold. Gold. Okay, so the Federal Reserve and all the tightening talk is a way for them to FUD gold. Why would they want to do that? Well, I don't know. Maybe the Russians own a lot of gold. Maybe the spot gold market has got problems. Price discovery in gold is really not there. The market's manipulated. Ask any gold bug. Hero Hedge, I feel like, publishes it every day. Okay, interest rates went up, the Fed talked tough, and gold, I don't know, it does a 38% retracement. That's something completely natural. So altcoins did a 62% retracement. Gold did a 38% retracement of the whole run-up that started in mid-December. What does that tell you? So rates go up, the Fed talks tough. And gold doesn't move. Stocks go down. The Fed talks tough. Crypto doesn't move. What does that tell you? The Bank of Japan is doing an unscheduled emergency every night to where it's no longer unscheduled. It's just an emergency. How many days is this going to go on before somebody says, hey, let's go live at 10 p.m. for Asia time, right? Because I can only imagine what happens when this Bank of Japan debacle really sets in. Is the Bank of Japan insolvent? Are they defending their own portfolio? Because after all, they print money, they buy government bonds. Are they worried about their own PL? I wonder. Wonder what happens when that gets out. Do people read the Bitcoin white paper? Do people remember why Satoshi, why they built Bitcoin to begin with? Or do they want to talk about SBF and Solana TVL? <laughs> right. Iron Alien says one to 100 reserve ratio on physical gold. Meaning if everybody all of a sudden wants to take delivery of physical gold, it's not there. Every gold bar has 100 owners. Right. This is why I was into the gold retriever universe. Still am. Work there. Right. Because it's gold and water together. Don't proactively bring it up, but gold is not going down. It should be. It's not. This could be the big trade of 2023. I actually thought it was going to do better last year. But eventually, this is going to explode. And I think that the part that everyone has not connected is can altcoins go with it in January? Now, altcoins are still trading plays. I get it. You know, you don't want to bet the farm. Uh, I got on Elon Musk's Twitter. I've been dying to like put something on his Twitter, like, you know, like reply. And he's like, you know, I really should stay out of politics because he said, you know, they should just elect this guy, Michael McCarthy, and get over themselves. I wouldn't mind it if the government got over themselves. Because if they don't, Musk may be running the country. You know, he may run for president. Who knows? I said, hey, Elon, what about Doge? I kind of got hosed on this idea last year that 
you know, he was going to have to embrace crypto. I'm like, hey, Elon, embrace Doge and make it the official currency of Austin, Texas, where Tesla is going to be headquartered and so is Twitter, most likely. Doge managed a retracement right to the 50% retracement of its up move. And I'm just waiting on Elon. I mean, you have to start asking yourself, like, seriously. Michael Saylor news flow. He ain't playing around. Elon's got to do something because Elon's going to run out of stuff to talk about if he doesn't embrace crypto. Now, of course, he's Elon. So if he wants to run out of stuff to talk about, he, that's his prerogative. But him and Saylor cannot afford to abandon the crypto narrative. So you have a positive crypto narrative that's going to be there from big, big players. Hedge funds who have to chase and retail obsessed with FUD. Meanwhile, legacy is falling apart. This could be a very powerful trading narrative. People sleep, you buy. It dips, you buy. It moons on a couple day, couple week basis, you take profits. And you come back and you just keep looking to do this until everyone's like, oh yeah, you buy a dip and then you sell it when it goes up a little. And when everybody is thinking that in May, that's when you just kind of hodl it for a couple of months. Watch, right? We want to be ahead of the curve thought-wise, right? Just let's look, take a look at stocks, right? This is the 89-minute chart. Let's move this to a four-hour chart of S&P E-minis, okay? So to be honest, I don't know what this means. Right? This is a four hour chart. So everyone is super bearish equities. I get it. Everyone's scared every time stocks go down. I get it. We'll find out, as someone noted, the Federal Reserve is going to have to wake up that if there's a flash event to the downside in equities in the first quarter, they're done. So they can talk all the you-know-what they want. The equity market is going to tell them when they are done, I really wish they would pay more attention to this because this is not going to stop at all. Absolutely not. Matter of fact, the thing that everyone has missed is that Salesforce came out the day before the FOMC minutes where the Fed talked all tough. Amazon layoffs were announced the day after. So every time the Fed opens their mouth, the day before and the day after, all these companies are going to lay people off using the Fed's nonsense as a smokescreen. Oh, interest rates are going up too high. Sorry, we have to make this move. So the private sector will just continue to talk to the Fed until they listen. And if anything, it's horrible. The Fed is giving these guys kind of a smokescreen to do these awful cost cuts. I mean, it's business. They have to create shareholder value. So they either grow revenue or cut costs. The only way to really cut costs is to cut people. It sucks, right? It sucks that this is the solution to inflation. This was the solution to inflation 30 years ago. It's not the solution to inflation now. All you are going to have now is... 5% inflation, which is great for gold and a whole bunch of people laid off, right? I had a professor in college who said, if you didn't have governments and failed government policies, you'd never have a recession. If there was no Fed or no Congress to make mistakes, in his mind, you would not have recessions. Most recessions can be tied to some sort of government policy error. Something to think about. How do you position your crypto portfolio? How do you find 38%, 23%, and 62% retracement levels of the recent rally in the next three days so you could position yourself for a move in crypto when people realize that this, like Amazon, okay, and this from the Bank of Japan is not just like your late night gold telegraph tweet. It's convenient how all this happens and like no one's paying attention. No one even gets it.
No, the thought of a central bank being insolvent and what that means for crypto. Like if legacy crumbles, AI is here and Web3 is 90% off, do I need to tell you what to do? Let's leave it there. That is the late night market update. That is the late night market update. I'm your host, Bill Noble. We will see you tomorrow.